What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. Today, I'm coming at you guys from beautiful Southern Colorado. This is one of my favorite spots to camp out here in the van just because it's so peacefully quiet and the views are beautiful as you can see. So I'm obviously out here camping with the van today, but as you can tell by the title of this video and the thumbnail, I would like to introduce you guys to my all new 2021 Polaris Razor Turbo S. Now today we're gonna be continuing this adventure further series that I first introduced here on the channel a few weeks back, starting with the Polaris Trail S. If you haven't checked out that video already, I'll leave a link for it right up here in the corner. And today we're moving on to something a little bit cooler, a little bit faster, a little bit more my style. So the Trail S was a loaner vehicle from Polaris. This Razor Turbo S, however, is my personal side by side. As you can tell, I've already put a couple miles on this thing. I had to go through the whole break-in process and everything that you need to do when getting a new side-by-side. -side. And I wanted to get a really good impression of this thing under my belt before I brought you guys a video. There is so much to talk about, so today I figured we would go on a little bit of an adventure up Mount Blanca. Now I chose this specific location as the first place to sort of reveal my Turbo S because I've come here quite a lot. I love camping here, like I mentioned. However, there is a road that leads you up to the top of this mountain right here, and it is not passable in my Sprinter van. As I mentioned in my previous video, it would be super cool to have a side-by-side -side that I can tow with me behind the van, and that's exactly what I did. So, the Turbo S has been living behind my van on this 14-foot trailer here. The trailer is a little bit big, for the actual size of the Turbo S, it's about 122 inches long. But I wanted to make sure I had room for future adventures if I opt for a bigger, larger vehicle, or if I decide to put tracks on the Turbo S. If I were to do that, this thing would obviously take up a little bit more room and I think I could fit it on the trailer with tracks on here. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Now let's just go over a few quick specs before we actually hit the trails around here. For the Turbo S, we're working with a 72 inch width from about center tire to center tire. So this thing has an incredibly wide stance. Something like this on the trails in Pennsylvania where I was last riding, obviously it would get a little bit tight. But when we are out in the open in a place like this here in Southern Colorado, this thing is going to shine. This thing is powered by a 925cc four-stroke motor, turbocharged of course, and probably the best thing about the Turbo S is right here under all the dirt. The Dynamics Active Suspension. On all four corners here you will find Fox Live Valve Suspension. Now, you could make an entire video about how this works, but essentially, it's monitoring the vehicle at all times and it's going to adjust the suspension to very quickly adapt to the terrain that you're riding on. We'll talk about that a bit more once we get onto the inside. Now, the way that the Turbo S is sitting right now, it is fairly stock, pretty standard equipment all around. However, this thing is also fully loaded. The things I have changed so far are the wider fender flares to try to keep some mud off of me. I of course added the cargo box in the rear because I'm gonna be hauling around camera equipment as we're rolling around today. And then if we come to the inside, I did install a little rear view mirror. Hopping in the seats here, we have the Razor Sub-Zero. This is what they call their Sub-Zero Control Decelerator Harnesses. Super comfortable so far, definitely no complaints there. These seats are much upgraded compared to the older Razor that I have shown on the channel in the past. That was a 2014, this one is of course a 2021. And then here we have a quick look at the cockpit. We have a Grant leather wrap steering wheel, which is super nice. Typical gauge cluster up here, again, super dusty. And then over here, we have the control, or I should say the main control switch for the dynamic active suspension, headlight toggle, two wheel, four wheel drive. And then front and center here, we have ride command from Polaris. 
This thing has so much functionality packed into it to live time vehicle monitoring, navigation, Bluetooth connection for your phone, audio. You actually have a little USB port down there to plug your phone in if you choose. And you can monitor everything on the vehicle real time here, including that dynamic suspension. And you can even do things like take phone calls and send text messages and use group ride with that ride command navigation if someone else has that too. So that is just a real quick overview of my Turbo S and you guys are gonna be seeing this a bunch here on the channel in the future. So no dedicated review right now. This thing is really just about getting out there and adventuring further. So like I mentioned previously, I have tried to take the van all the way up this mountain right here. You can actually see some vehicles parked over there. Once you get to that brush line that you can see right there where everything turns green, the trails get pretty gnarly. The van could make it up a decent amount of that. However, it's just really not worth it with everything shaking around. So this will be my first time going up there and checking things out firsthand. Now I've been waiting all day to do this, so what we're gonna do is actually take some food with us and cook dinner while we're up there. I got my helmet and goggles and gloves in the razor already. Long sleeve is probably a good idea because it's gonna get cold as soon as that sun sets. I think that's it, so let's go for a ride. All right guys, we made it about halfway up Mount Blanca here. Not sure if we're gonna go all the way up to the top because once you crest this next ridge here, you're gonna be passing some mountain lakes and stuff like that and it's gonna take you to a point where you're not going to be able to get this view right here. And I'm making my way up here for sunset, cook some food, have dinner while looking at this. It's so sick up here. If you look really closely, you can almost see the sat van right down here in this sandy area. We're a couple miles up here on this trail and down in that area where I have the van parked, it's super fast trails, dirt, loose rocks, and you can really carry a lot of speed through there, especially with the Turbo S. However, the trails we're on right now, obviously the higher we climb, 
the rockier it's getting. Luckily, the Turbo S has a really high ground clearance, so stock, the way this thing sits right now, it's doing great right out of the box. A lot of that is thanks to the Dynamics active suspension, so let's hop in here and actually take a look at this quick. All right, so here in the cockpit, we're looking at the ride command screen right now. Let me actually turn up the brightness. I have it on auto right now. We're just gonna crank that up so you guys can see everything. So this is a seven inch touchscreen display, which works with gloves, which is obviously nice because you should be riding with gloves on. And there's a ton of information that you can see here. The odometer is already reading 107 miles. Like I mentioned, I did the break-in period and now we're taking it out on an adventure. You got battery voltage, engine temp, miles per hour, RPMs. You can customize all this stuff however you see fit. This screen right here is the Dynamics Active Suspension like monitoring system. Now it's gonna get a little loud here, but let me fire this thing up so it actually works. So right there as it's fired up, you see that we are now in the sport mode. This is giving you a live readout of how firm the suspension is on each corner. And in sport mode, it's great for trails like this right here because you never really know what's coming up next. The sport mode really gives you a ton of flexibility and you don't really have to think about it. You just kind of set it and forget it. If you want to hammer down out on some flats, it's going to firm up that suspension as you're riding over whoops. And then if you're crawling over rocks and stuff like we're about to do right here, it will actually soften it up a little bit and make the ride a little bit easier for you. So speaking of comfort, if I flick this switch right here down to comfort, I don't know if you'll be able to tell on camera, but the entire chassis is going to drop closer to the ground. Not sure if that came across on camera there, but what that's actually doing is obviously loosening up the suspension so that it's not so firm and this is going to give you your most comfortable ride. Now you'll really notice a difference if you are riding in firm mode, which puts everything up to 10. If I go and ride like this for a little while, which I'll actually do here before we make our next stop, it's going to have all four corners super stiff and then when you bump it down to comfort again, it almost feels like this thing is on air ride. It just sort of goes and levels out the entire Razor. So that active suspension is what I'm most stoked about on this Razor here, but there's also a lot more here. So the next screen over is navigation. I can see everywhere I rode today when scouting out different locations. If I open up the bottom menu here, I can add waypoints to my trip. If I'm going really far, you can do different rides with group rides and people. If someone else has ride command, like say my buddy Mike, Last line of defense, him and I are going to be doing some videos together here in the future. We can sync up ride command systems and then we can actually see where each other are at on the trail. Next over we have your phone. If you connect your phone to this, you can access all your contacts, a keypad, messaging, Bluetooth, all that good stuff. Bluetooth to the phone, this is how I've been listening to music. And then if you select your source, you also have AM, FM radio, weather radio, and then USB, iPod. Who out there still has an iPod? Really curious about that. And then there's a bunch of different settings and a ton of other stuff you can go through. You can access your cameras right here. So this one does have a backup camera and I will be installing a front facing camera so I can see rocks in front of me, which I don't have right now. But hey, that's enough talking about this thing. Let's actually keep putting it to some good use. The trail is going to get a little bit gnarlier from here on out, but I'm hoping we can make it up to that ridge right there for a nice sunset dinner. So let's hit it.
Well, I think I've made it to a point where I wouldn't be much comfortable going forward without having the Turbo S hooked up with a little bit more accessories or just straight up having someone else here with me. Just made it to this pretty gnarly rock section here and the Turbo S is definitely capable of it. However, this looks a little scary right here and I don't have a winch yet. Now I do plan on installing a winch on the Turbo S just like the Trail S had and in a situation like this I could totally take the easier route off to the right side here and if I'm feeling a little bit too uncomfortable because this is narrow here definitely don't want to roll down there because there's like a little creek river running through there but I could winch to something around here just for a little bit of added security. I'm going to save that part of the adventure for another time but Look at this view. This right here is what it's all about. Now conveniently placed right next to this rock crawl is like an old abandoned log house. Kind of spooky, but kind of cool at the same time. Could you imagine walking out your front door in the morning to that view? I think I could get used to that. So I've got about 40 minutes until sunset, probably even a little bit more because we're so high up. Currently 10,509 feet in elevation. Makes it a little bit harder to breathe. I'm gonna head back down to one of the switchbacks, find a spot to post up and cook some dinner.
Good morning once again, everyone. It is a new day today. Stayed out up in the mountains on the Razor until about maybe like nine o'clock last night. Made my way down, loaded it up, got a shower, got to sleep. And that was probably the most comfortable, relaxing adventure that I've gone on in a while, thanks to the Turbo S. Now that I've got over 100 miles on this thing, I definitely know a few different modifications that I will be adding to the Turbo S just to make it a little bit more comfortable as we're doing stuff like we did yesterday. The first thing is definitely going to be a winch up front, so I'm going to work on getting one of those to install. Another thing are rock sliders, which mount to these points right here. I didn't run into any issues yesterday, luckily, because this thing has such high ground clearance already, but for the future, I'd rather be safe than sorry. And I think the rock sliders look kind of cool as well. Once I get out to some desert type of areas, I definitely want to get a light bar to install on top. I already have a light bar harness, so that's something I will add. Possibly some LED whips in the rear. We already got audio, that sounds great. A windshield is definitely something I will add too. And then I considered the front protection like bull bars and in the rear but this thing just looks so mean and I'm not really smashing through low brush or anything like that or at least I don't really plan on it so I think I want to keep this thing looking basically how it is right now nice clean and simple so there you guys have my first ride impression of my turbo s like i said you guys are going to be seeing a lot of this on the channel here in the future this is my first time personally owning a side by side that i have complete control over and can do whatever i want with so i'm curious to get some feedback from you guys what are some modifications that you think i should do to my turbo s and if you own a side by side where are you riding at are you somewhere out here out west I would actually love to meet up with some of you guys who do this a little bit more than I do and pick your brain and maybe go ride together. So let me know all that stuff in the comments down below. If you are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every single week. As always, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.